Ah, the rains are here and the litany has begun. Strange because a series of demolitions in the nation's capital a few years ago seriously reduced the spate of flooding in Abuja, especially at the Lokogoma and Lube areas. On this episode of Data in Abuja, we go to Lube, a suburb in the nation's capital, to a place called Trademore Estate. The flood hit Trademore and raised so many questions about the activities of residents in the past few years. My guest helps us understand what the situation is and what the plans are going forward. Meanwhile, on our focus on the nation's capital, we look at the trade mall flood and attempts by the FCT administration to keep neighborhoods safe from floods. And yes, we have an update of major stories from Nigeria's presidency. This is Dateline Abuja. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. Let's begin with our Abuja wrap. A look at the major stories this week from Nigeria's seat of power. President Bola Tinubu has expressed his profound gratitude to Nigerians for the overwhelming reception accorded him in Lagos on Tuesday, conveying his best wishes to all Nigerians during the Idil Kabir celebrations. The president received a tumultuous welcome from a massive crowd of Nigerians upon his return to Lagos following his seven-day trip abroad. He had travelled to Paris, France to attend the summit on a new global finance impact and had also made a brief private visit to London, United Kingdom. As President Tinubu's convoy made its way from Ikeja to his private residence in Bodilion, Ikoi, Lagosians lined the road from Moritala Mohamed International Airport enthusiastically waving and expressing their joy. This marks the president's first visit to Lagos since his inauguration as Nigeria's 16th president on May 29, 2023. President Bola Tinubu joined Muslims in Nigeria and all over the world in observance of the Eid al-Kabir. In a statement from the president on the celebration, he states, quote, As we immerse ourselves in the joy of this moment and celebrate, let us remember those who may not be as fortunate like us. Coming at the end of religious activities spanning the first 10 days of the Islamic month of Dul Hijjah, Idil Kabir enjoined us as Muslims to show mercy and compassion to our fellow humans. Idil Kabir is a festival of sacrifice and total obedience to Allah as exemplified in the exceptional action of Prophet Ibrahim. There is no greater sense of duty ever recorded in history outside the example of Prophet Ibrahim in offering his only son Ismail as a sacrifice to Allah. End of quote. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday in Lagos urged Nigerians to have faith in God that the country will experience peace, stability and prosperity. Speaking to reporters after observing the Idil Kabir prayers at the Dodden Barracks prayer ground, the president stressed the need for unity and cooperation, appealing to Nigerians to eschew ethnic and religious rivalries. Have faith in yourself, believing that you you, as a citizen of this country, you must, you must join hands. No religious identity, no tribal identity. Live with one another in joy and prosperity. It will come. Nigeria will see peace, stability, and God will grant peace to those of force who are in the war front, will spare their life, will give them victory, those in the hospitals will give them succor and peace. The president on Thursday in Ijebode, Ogun State, said he remained hopeful and optimistic about achieving victory in the last presidential election despite the ineffective cashless policy implemented by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The president spoke in separate remarks at the palaces of the paramount ruler of Ijebu land, Oba Sikiru Adetona, in Ijebode, and Alaki of Egba land, Oba Adedotun Gbadebo, in Abeokuta, during a thank you visit to the royal fathers. Reflecting on the challenges in the build-up to the 2023 presidential election, President Tinubu recounted his concerns about the confiscation of funds and the failure of the cashless policy, and how he had previously sought wisdom and guidance from Oba Adetona during his visit to the palace. According to the president, he invoked the spirit of freedom and determination symbolized by Baba Emilokan to overcome the obstacles in the elections. 
Back in Lagos, President Bola Tinubu on Thursday said he could have chosen to maintain the hitherto multiple foreign exchange systems and benefit from it, but instead opted to unify the official and parallel market rates to save the country from financial hemorrhage. Speaking at a civic reception organized in his honor by the Lagos State Government at Lagos House Marina, President Tinubu said he took the decision in the nation's best interest, just like he did with the fuel subsidy removal. 95% of food and clothing used by internally displaced persons in Abuja at the internally displaced persons camp have been provided by non-governmental organizations and well-meaning Nigerians. This revelation was made by the coordinator of the IDPs in Abuja, Idris Ali Halilu, when we visited the Durumi IDP camp to see how they celebrated their ideal Kabir. Welcome back. The Federal Capital Territory Emergency Management Agency is asking residents of the nation's capital to resist the temptation to build houses along floodplains and waterways because these portions of land happen to be cheaper than others. It's a situation where you get short-term gains and long-term agony, as many residents of Trademore Estates in Lube are about to tell us in this report. Meanwhile, the sensitization on the 2023 flood which is predicted to be severe, is underway in Abuja, and residents are urged to take proper precautions. It is a case of sorrow and tears as flash floods hit some parts of Trademore Estate in Abuja for the third time in four years. The estate located in Lugbe area along the airport road in the nation's capital was flooded after a heavy downpour in the early hours of Friday, June the 23rd. Several houses were submerged. Vehicles and properties were damaged in the flood. One of the effects of this flood is this traffic jam. Officials of the Federal Fire Service and other responders were on ground to assist residents. The FCT Emergency Management Agency is not happy that some people had built their houses on floodplains. Um, so far, most of the houses that were a mark for demolition last year were submerged. I've gone round and I've seen most of them that are yet to be demolished they were submerged too. So that simply means that there are still structures that are still on the waterway. So we are going to come back here with town planners and surveyors to carry out a comprehensive survey of the whole estate. The good thing about this year is that there was no loss of life. And we have realized that some parts, some of the houses that are on the low plane were the ones that are really affected. And they were so much up to above window level. So we are still pleading with the residents of uh, Trade Mall. Agreed, we were, we were impressed when we arrived here and we realized that the residents of Trade Mall swung into action before our arrival. They gave a helping hand and that was why there is no life loss. And we are very happy with that. But for how long are we going to continue with this? Some residents of the estate, including an eyewitness, shared their thoughts on the flood. All of us are in our security post when we enter work, including Godwin, all of our security at this second gate, trade mall. So this rain starts small, 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 small. When we are there, we are discussing, the, there's one man, Suleiman, he said, this rain have covered this security post before. Immediately, I just peek, I pack my bag, I said, I'm going outside. The solution to this problem, from my observation, we already told them before, the volume of water that comes from Galadimawa to Tridmore is massive. There is no how it can be contained in Tridmore. We've told them before, they, in fact, they, they promise that they are going to take an holistic look at you know, this problem. That is, that is to say the volume of water that comes into Tridmore and flood Tridmore. The flooding in Tridmore is just like symptom. There is an underlying pathology. There is underlying problem. And that underlying problem is the fact that the volume of water that is coming from uh, Galadimawa to Tradmore is, is very much. I woke up this morning at the back of my office and I saw the volume of water coming into Tradmore. It's massive. It's more than last year. By my own knowledge, we thought it's just like a rain shower. 
the next thing, let me say, uh, all our people should get out with their properties and uh, let our valid, our estate um, documents should be valid. My going inside, the next thing I saw that the water covers me. While the rains are yet to get to the peak, the chairman of phase three of the estate calls for government intervention. As a result of the rain that has been falling today, we've had flash flooding, which we get every year in Tradmore. Um, thank God our primary concern today was to rescue life as opposed to concentrating on people's properties. So as we speak, no life was lost. We give all the glory to God. But um, we expect that uh, the issue of this annual catastrophe will have to be addressed in tandem with government agencies. And that's what we are looking at. We hope they will be able to come to our rescue this time. The Federal Capital Territory Emergency Management Agency is asking residents of the nation's capital to resist the temptation to build houses along floodplains and waterways because these portions of land are relatively cheaper than others. Following this flood, a few houses may have to be pulled down in order to arrest the perennial flooding within the estate. Meanwhile, the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, has declared the Trademore Estate Lube a disaster zone. In a statement in Abuja, the Director General of the FCT Emergency Management Agency, Dr. Abbas Garba Idris, said, quote, the decision follows a consistent and persistent threat to life from flooding at the estate. It is expected that whoever resides in the estate should relocate to a safer place. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has placed a high premium on the lives and properties of the residents of the estate, hence the reason for declaring the estate a disaster zone. He further explains that the decision to declare the Trademore Estate as a disaster zone is to save lives and properties as more rain is expected this year in Abuja. While commiserating with people affected by the floods, Dr. Idris advised the residents of the FCT to always adhere to early warnings and avoid any act that could lead to flooding in the FCT. End quote. Flood predictions for 2023 have been announced, and Nigerians have been warned that the floods will be grave this year. In late January 2023, the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, noted that in 2022, 662 persons lost their lives, 3,174 others suffered injuries, and over 2.4 million individuals have been displaced by the floods. Thousands of houses, hectares of farmlands and several critical assets were destroyed by raging floods in 2022. In the nation's capital, the FCT Emergency Management Agency flagged off a joint assessment tour of the 2023 flood-prone areas in the nation's capital, beginning here at Apoduse and visiting places like Dogongada at the Lokogoma Phase 2 axis and ending at the Galadimawa Interchange, a place that has a past riddled with deaths from flooding. Demolition of houses on floodplains and estates around this interchange has ensured the area stays flood-free at least in the past two years. Following the floods in 2022, the federal government in a statement noted that the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, had written to each of the 36 states of the Federation through the state's respective governors, advising on the appropriate action to take in view of the gloomy forecast of the rains that year. These warnings are largely ignored by subnationals. This year, 2023, flood warnings have been given again, and states are urged to begin preventive measures to avoid loss of lives and property. The coming months will reveal whether state governments took the warnings seriously or not. Meanwhile, if you live in Abuja and your house is on a flood plain, the Federal Capital Territory Authority wants you to know that it is time to move. My guest on the program is the Executive Secretary of the Federal Capital Development Agency, FCDA, Engineer Shehu Hadi Ahmed. What's really going on at Trademore Estate? Is there a lasting solution to this recurring problem? What other areas are in danger? And will the demolition man be coming to Lube soon? Please watch this. Engineer Shehu Hadi, welcome to Dateline Abuja. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. You know, we, uh, we've been talking for many years. Yes, <laughs> well, we've never really had the opportunity Today, to see doing, each yes. other. You know, the thing about Trademore Estate is this is something that everyone has been talking about for years. 
Totally. And I know that after some time, for maybe like two or three, there were some demolitions that happened. Yes. And after, after those demolitions happened, we noticed that we weren't hearing about floods at Lukogoma. Yes. And trade more. Yes. And now, two years after those particular demolitions, the flooding is back. Let's go back. What is the situation with trade more estate? What well, trade more. Trade more has some peculiarities. I don't know if you had visited Tremor, you see that at the approach of the road leading to the Treadmore estate, you see that the road level, finished road level, is far above even some of the roofs there. So this is a clear indication that there is no reference in the development of those properties to what could come as the finished road level, even where a road is not uh, developed. There are designs from where a, a very careful developer can use his consultant to collect information from the FCT authorities uh, regarding finished levels for roads and uh, inverts for drainages so that they can tie in because everything in the development of the city of Abuja is an integrated infrastructure development. This we have not seen in Treadmo over the years. Why? Let's go. Let's, let's talk. Let's say the truth now. This is where I said the issues are beyond the technical. There are other behaviorial. There was, your office existed at the time these licenses were being given to these developers. If at all the licenses have been given. If the licenses were given. In, incidentally. If the licenses have not been given. Yes. Uh, wait, let's, let's, let's go back. Yes. <laughs> are there licenses given to developers to develop that area? Normally, before a developer should move to site, one, he needs to have a title to the land, and then when he has a title to the land, he must have presented his proposed development um, plan for vetting and then approval. Did this happen with Trademore Estate? It did not. Neither of the two. Neither Where did the development of Trademore Estate begin? Way back, uh, we understand uh, that um, the developer of Trademore is the dual owner of Mina Anuel Estate, if you know, if you remember that estate around Lubu, along the airport expressway by the right, if you are going, which at the time, sometimes around 2002, 2003, was demolished by the then RFI administration, and it became a subject. These are the kind of property development which have not been licensed, that is titled. So let's be straightforward here. Yeah, are you same? saying that yes. this man... Yes that owns trade more, yes. does not have the license to have that estate there. If we were to come, FCT, when I mean we, I mean FCT also were to come on to trade more after having done with Minanuel, but there was transition and then something just, we could not continue. So it, it was supposed to have been demolished It was some supposed time to ago. have been removed long ago. And this has remained, this is where now I'm saying there are other social concerns and so. Now people are attaching more empathy in the past. Now it has even turned. It's people who are even clamoring for FCT to come and remove this. Every because time we showing. speak to someone from the FCT authorities, yeah. you always come up with something that really shocks us. Are you saying that every house that is in Trademore Estate right now is an illegal structure? It's an illegal structure. Every Can't house? Read my lips. Illegal. Go to an activity. You see, as FCTA, yes, we take responsibility because FCTA and FCDA are all work together. Do you understand? But you go to an action, if you see a demolition, you see a mark. Has Trademore been marked? Control, has, was Trademore marked? Had always, always, all along, always been marked. As we go now, even the, the properties that have been submerged, there are markings there. In fact, there was a video clip in which even the residents are saying, this thing has been marked, every day should come and remove it. There's a police station there. We took the initiative last year to liaise with the FCT command as well as the, the force headquarters, that this your police station is clearly vulnerable to this flooding. And this year, we've been vindicated because we ordered that it should be relocated. Incidentally, we even went extra mile to even get them the place to relocate to That's the station. That's a police station? Yvonne, yes. That police station has become a subject of reference in the last flooding of Friday because it was completely submerged. Assuming it was retained as a police station. Would they have had the, time to relocate? The inmates and everything will have gone. Exactly. Now, because this is a government property, it was very easy to take action. That way. So we had made effort in, in conjunction with the permanent secretary of the FCTA. 
We went and briefed the Secretary to the Government of the Federation just um, three days before, we, uh, a day before we even went to um, Tretmore for the declaration of this disaster zone. Because that is what it is. We have declared Tretmore and its immediate environment as disaster zone. By disaster zone, we are saying that people are advised of checkers there and all the advice to evacuate because when so that evacuation note is actually saw that from yes. from the FCT emergency yes. uh, Mr. Abbas Idris's yes, yes. office yeah. are you saying the everybody yes. everybody in trade more everybody for trade more, every structure i think it has become like trade more has become like the reference name because Treadmore is a but very massive in, estate. What I'm saying, if we're even talking no, about just so, just so that the people who live in Treadmore who are watching this right now yeah. can hear it from the FCT yes. authorities. Every single person yes. in Treadmore estate should relocate? Treadmore has a peculiarity that it is not even titled, that there is no building approved plan. It's not even an issue. But the fact that that area is on a low level, low lying ground, which is prone to flooding any time under whatever consideration. What it has legal paper, let him present it. When you want to buy a property, our position in FCT is come and do a search. The search will hold you attached to the FCT authority. If you have anything like that, they should come. They should present it. Okay. They should present it. Are you going to do demolitions at Treadmore? We are going to remove Treadmore and such other violations that we encounter, which are contrary, contravening our Abuja master plan. Some people believe that the political ties and interests that bind and, you know, a lot of things that have gone under the bridge since Treadmore was created will not allow you to be able to Gone do this demolition. The bridge. There is no bridge in Treadmore. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? I at a point in time, we were in Treadmore. We were on site. The last year that we went to do, I had a call for a very big way. Who is of the opinion that, please, temperature says was mad. How do you do that? Just for my own curiosity, at please. the time when he called you and told you, whoever this was, that called and said our temper just, uh, justice we with didn't. mercy, you went on with the demolition? We went ahead. And my minister commended us for that. So what other places in the FCT are we looking there are at? There several other places, especially in the phases two and three. Lokogoma is one location in the entire area there. Mountain of Fire is a place close to Lokogoma. Galadima around about is, And it's really they are all coming along the same water courses. Well, this is a conversation that has to happen over and over yes. again. And hopefully you'll be here for us. Anytime. I want I to really thank you so it. much, Engineer Hadi, for thank being with us on Dateline much. Abuja. And good luck with all the work you have ahead of you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thanks to my guest and to everyone who spoke to us today on the program. Floods are inevitable. But its effects can be mitigated. All it takes is political will and matching words with action. It may be easier for leaders to do nothing and seek compensation when the devastation from flooding happens, but that's just wrong, and history will judge such leaders. Meanwhile, there has to be some way of checking this behavior. As a people, we should seek to make our country better than we met it. So avoid building on floodplains, keep your gutters clean, and if you live in a flood-prone area, it's time to consider moving. That's Dateline Abuja this week. Please let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handle showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kayla Megwa. See you next time.